Hey guys, it is Rely here. So, today I'm going to be showing you how to actually make this radial MoGraph effect in Blender 2.8. So, this is what it looks like. I will not be teaching you how to do this gradient today, although that will be coming up in a future tutorial. Alright guys, so let's hop into a new Blender environment and let's get on with it. Alright guys, first thing you want to do is actually select your cube and your light and you want to actually press delete. So you can select by left clicking and delete is just the delete key or the X key if you prefer. Alright guys, next thing we're going to do is press 1 to enter front view and then press control alt 0. Alright, so now what you're going to do is actually go shift A to add yourself a circle curve. So it's in the curve section and it's called a circle. Alright. Now with the circle selected, you're going to go RX90 to rotate at 90 degrees on the X axis. And remember, you can left click to confirm any rotation or movement or anything else. Alright guys, so what we're going to do now is actually go into our edit mode by pressing tab. And you can see you're in edit mode by looking up at the top here and it's going to say edit mode. Alright, so now what we're going to do is actually press V and select free. That is going to mean that all these handles will not align automatically because in this case we don't want them to, be, to. So basically what we're going to do guys is set a point for the computer to start the animation because right now that this is a seamless circle and the computer is like, well, where do I start this animation from? So what we're going to do is actually select this bottom point and we're going to press Alt C. This is going to disconnect this area and this means the bottom point is going to be where our animation will actually begin. Alright guys, now with your bottom handle selected, press Shift S, cursor to selected, and then press the handle to the left, press E, right click, and this is going to extrude it, but it's going to reset the location. Then you're going to go Shift S once again, and select Selection to Cursor. Um, guys, just something I forgot to mention is this is actually Selection to Cursor Keep Offset. So make sure it's Keep Offset, because otherwise it will not work. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and you can get back to it now. Then we're going to go RY minus 90. Alright guys, so what we basically just did is we put a new um, we put a new extruded point right where it used to be. So now the computer knows where to start because we have a gap here. You just can't see it because there's, there's not really a gap, but it is there is a cut in the circle. So yeah. Anyway, press tab to exit edit mode, and now what we're going to do is actually see over here, guys, we're going to move into the um, curve tab, and we're going to actually change it from a 3D to a 2D curve. Alright, guys, so in Blender, the render resolution, if it's set to zero, it's always going to base the render resolution off of the preview. So in this case, it would render a um, 12 resolution. So we're going to actually change this to about 40 because I found that that is a very nice looking circle for renders. All right. So now guys, we're going to actually make this geometry section um, expand <laughs> and we're going to actually set the depth guys to one meter. So what that is going to do is create a perfect, um, a perfect circle that meets at the center, which is exactly what we want. And guys, remember, you can look around the 3D scene by holding your middle mouse button, and you can return to your camera view using the zero number on your keypad. Alright, guys. So, what we're going to do is actually um, start animating this. Although, the first thing we need to do before we can do that is press S, Y, 0. And then press Enter, or left click to confirm. And you'll see now... <clears throat> that we've basically scaled it down on the Y axis to zero, meaning that it is now a 2D object instead of a 3D object. So yeah guys, that's really what we're going to need for this type of animation. So I'm going to press zero to enter my camera once again. Then after that, I'm actually going to look in the timeline here. And something I like to do is actually basically set the points where my animation will start and finish. So in this case, I'm going to go hold left click here and go to frame one. I'm going to press M guys so that I can start my animation at frame one. Then I'm going to move to frame 30. And once again, I'm going to press M. All right, guys. So you don't have to do this, but this is what I prefer to do so that I just, I don't know, I have a clear workflow of what I'm actually trying to accomplish. All right, guys. So now what we're going to do is go to frame one change the bevel start and end both to zero. 
and then we're going to keyframe them by hovering over these parameters and pressing I. Then we're going to move to frame 30 and do the same thing except we're going to set them to 1. Alright guys, so now that we have done that, we do have an animation, but the issue is these bevels stay at the same levels as each other, meaning that we can never actually see what the animation looks like. To help you further visualize this, let's just hover our cursor up here and hold left click and bring open a graph editor. So once you have the new tab, you need to go up here, select the editor type and change it to a graph editor under animation section. All right, and then you want to press normalize so that everything is between the negative one and one um, data points. Then once again, remember you can look around by holding down your middle mouse button. So yeah. Now you're going to go key and we're going to change the interpolation mode to bezier. And now what we're going to do is just left click on one of our points at the top here on frame 30. And we're going to press S and we're going to actually make it much larger. So about there will do. But you will notice now that we um, scale it up, you'll notice that the end value changes. And because it's different from the start value, we actually get a little bit of a surface building up in the viewport which is really cool so yeah um, I'm gonna size it up to about here and then I'm gonna left click to confirm and then what I'm gonna do is actually play through the animation and you will notice it is extremely smooth and it looks very nice alright guys so now that I've done that I'm actually gonna make up a material because I don't really like the way that this material looks because th there's really no material okay guys so what we're going to do is actually press Z and go into rendered. That way we can actually see our material because before it was in a solid view, meaning it was just showing the 3D space. After you've done that, make sure you have your Bezier circle selected. Then go into the material section, add a new material, change the surface from principled to emission. And then what you want to do is actually change it to a color that you like. I'm going to change it to blue just for the purpose of this video. All right, guys. So that is how you make a basic radial swipe, a basic radial motion graphics effect. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I will be coming out with how to do very complex um, materials soon with like gradients and stuff. So be sure to keep an eye out for that on the channel. But until next time, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I wish you luck with this project.